In less than a month, the ground beneath Naples has lurched upward at its fastest pace since the last major crisis, while residents have felt earthquake tremors almost daily, with 1,050 quakes in a single October. Today, the measured uplift at Campi Flegri is now accelerating, not slowing. History shows what happens when this threshold is crossed. In 1538, it triggered a new volcano entirely. So why is the risk rising now? And what actually decides if an eruption, a major quake, or just creeping damage comes next? To answer that, you need to see how each centimeter of lift and every day of shaking are changing the fate of an entire city. Centuries before seismographs and satellite feeds, the people of Pozzuoli measured the living ground by the marks it left on stone. In 1538, the earth rose so violently that a new volcanic cone, Monte Nuovo, formed in just a few days. The eruption buried fields, reshaped the shoreline, and left a permanent reminder that Campi Flegre is not a silent landscape. That episode, preserved in drawings and old chronicles, set a precedent. When the ground moves here, the consequences can be sudden and lasting. Generations later, the memory of 1538 lingered, but it was the crisis of the early 1980s that defined modern risk for the city. From 1982 to 1984, Pozzuoli experienced relentless ground uplift, about 1.6 meters in total, accompanied by thousands of small earthquakes. Entire neighborhoods cracked and shifted. Over 30,000 residents were ordered to evacuate as building after building showed signs of strain. Masonry walls split, stairwells buckled, and some streets became impassable. Families were separated, businesses shuttered, and the city's rhythm was broken by the daily uncertainty of whether it was safe to return. In official records, more than 3,700 buildings required inspection or repair. Residents still recall the disruption. Months spent in temporary housing, waiting for word that their homes were safe, or watching as familiar streets emptied out. Civil protection teams learned hard lessons about evacuation logistics, emergency communications, and the need for real-time infrastructure checks. Those lessons still shape today's response plans. Recent history added a new chapter. In February and March of 2024, the ground surged upward again, this time at a rate of nearly 3 centimeters per month, one of the fastest recorded in decades. Over a thousand earthquakes rattled the region in just a few weeks. Schools closed for inspections, hospitals transferred patients from upper floors, and residents began photographing cracks in their walls, sharing updates in neighborhood groups. Local news broadcasts featured parents describing children waking up to tremors night after night. Officials issued bulletins in measured tones, balancing reassurance with reminders to stay alert. The visible impact reached the waterfront, where parts of Pozzoli's port grew shallower. Boats that once floated easily now ran aground, a subtle but persistent sign of the land's steady rise. For people living in the shadow of Campi Flegre, these episodes are more than historical milestones. They are lived experiences, woven into daily decisions and public policy. Each crisis has left its mark on the city's buildings, its evacuation routes, and the way residents interpret every new bulletin from the monitoring stations. Today's numbers, centimeters of uplift, and counts of daily quakes carry the weight of this history. They are not just measurements, they are signals that, here, the ground's movement is always personal, and vigilance is learned from the past. Since 2005, the ground beneath Pozzuoli has risen by about 1.6 meters, a vertical shift that has quietly but steadily transformed the city's relationship with its own coastline. The Wright GNSS station, perched above the port, records this movement with millimeter precision. Recent weeks have brought a new acceleration. The official uplift rate now stands at roughly 2.5 centimeters per month. That's 30 centimeters in a year an increase from the 24 centimeters per year seen just months ago, and far above the 18 centimeters per year measured during quieter periods. These numbers are not just technical footnotes. 
They mean the ground is moving upward at a pace not seen since the Brady Seismic Crisis of the early 1980s when entire neighborhoods were forced to evacuate. The uplift is not uniform across the caldera. It peaks at the right station, then drops away in a bell-shaped curve toward the city's edges. Satellite radar confirms the center of this deformation sits just offshore from Rione Terra, matching the GNSS readings almost exactly. Each pulse of uplift is tracked week by week, with moving averages showing not only the rate but the acceleration itself, how quickly the ground's upward speed is changing. In February and March 2024, short-term rates briefly shot up to nearly 3 centimeters per month before settling back. Now the curve is steepening again, and the question is whether this new pace will hold. The impact of this uplift is most visible at the waterfront. In Pozzuoli port, the sea floor has risen along with the land, leaving some berths shallower by over a meter compared to 2005. Boats that once floated freely now run aground at low tide. Shop owners along the quay describe watching the waterline creep steadily away from their doorsteps. A coffee bar owner whose family has worked the port for three generations points to a slip where ferries used to dock and says they used to have deep water here all year. Now, after heavy rain or a big tide, you can see the bottom. This steady rise is more than an inconvenience for boat traffic. It is a real-time indicator of the pressure building underground. Each centimeter is a sign that fluids and gases are pushing upward, straining the crust that separates the caldera's hot interior from the city above. The numbers from the right curve are not abstract. They translate directly into physical changes, visible on the streets and in the port. As the annualized rate edges upward, residents and scientists alike are watching for the next sign of stress. Cracks in the pavement, doors that will not close, the subtle shift in a familiar view across the bay. The ground's movement is a warning that the system is not at rest, and that the strain accumulating beneath Pozzuoli is approaching levels that, in the past, have led to shaking strong enough to test the limits of the city's aging buildings. Quake activity at Campi Flegri has entered a new phase of intensity. In the week of November 3rd to 9th, seismic stations recorded 165 earthquakes of magnitude zero or greater. That is a noticeable climb from the 149 events tallied the previous week, and it is not a statistical blip. The strongest registered at magnitude 2.5, but the real story is in the relentless frequency. Tremors are now a daily feature of life. The official bulletin divides this period into three separate swarms. But for residents, the shaking feels nearly continuous. Each event is shallow, with most quakes concentrated between 3 and 5 kilometers below the surface. This depth band is critical. Not only are these quakes easily felt, they also occur close enough to impact old masonry, schools, and apartment buildings that were never designed for this level of seismic stress. Over the past month, the pattern has been clear. Dozens of small earthquakes every day, sometimes clustering in bursts that rattle windows and send people checking for new cracks in their walls. While most of these events are minor, the sheer volume means the crust is under constant strain. Scientists tracking the weekly numbers warn that if these small quakes do not relieve enough stress, there is a real possibility of a larger event, a magnitude 4 or even a magnitude 5. In a densely built city like Pozzuoli, with many structures dating back decades, shaking at that level is more than an inconvenience. It can mean structural damage, blocked exits, and the need for rapid evacuation. The numbers from this week's catalog are more than data points. They are a warning that the system is active, the pressure is mounting, and the risk of a damaging quake is not theoretical. The next days and weeks will show whether this swarm pulse will taper off or if the ground is preparing for something stronger. Deep beneath Pozzuoli, the crust is not a solid barrier, but a living, shifting shell. Each burst of seismicity sends fractures branching through the rock, like cracks spreading through old plaster. These micro-cracks accumulate over time, 
invisible to the eye but detectable in the patterns of seismic waves. High-resolution tomography reveals a maze of fissures at depths around 3.5 kilometers, channels that did not exist decades ago and that now open new pathways for gas and hot fluids to rise. With every swarm, the caprock becomes more permeable. What once acted as a tight seal now resembles a filter etched with a web of tiny fractures. Models of permeability based on both field measurements and laboratory experiments show that even a modest increase in crack density can sharply accelerate the movement of fluids. This isn't just about the risk of shaking, it's about the slow transformation of the caldera's internal plumbing. The more the rock is fractured, the easier it becomes for pressurized steam and carbon dioxide to escape upward, feeding surface fumaroles and raising temperatures at the vents. Tomographic imaging, paired with gas monitoring, confirms that these new fissures are not evenly distributed. Instead, they branch and cluster, often linking zones of repeated seismicity to areas where surface gas flux has spiked. The process is self-reinforcing. Each quake swarm weakens the caprock a little more, setting the stage for greater permeability and, in turn, more efficient transfer of heat and gas. In this way, Persistent swarms are not just a symptom of stress, but an agent of structural change, quietly altering the balance between the deep reservoir and the city above. October 2025 set a new benchmark for seismic activity at Campi Flegre. By the end of the month, the official tally reached around 1,050 earthquakes, more than 30 events per day on average. The numbers tell a story of relentless strain, not a brief swarm, but a sustained barrage that left little room for the ground to settle or for monitoring teams to catch their breath. Each square on the October calendar filled with quake counts. Some days spiked above 50, others dipped only slightly. For residents, there was no pattern of quiet weekends or predictable lulls, just the steady, unpredictable rhythm of shaking that could come at dawn or in the middle of the night. This level of activity taxed the region's seismic network, forcing analysts to work around the clock to catalog events and update risk models in real time. Automated systems flagged clusters for review, while field teams checked for new surface cracks and signs of stress in critical infrastructure. The sheer volume of data, over 1,000 events in a single month, prompted INGV to issue more frequent bulletins each one annotated with daily tallies and depth distributions. The October heat map, dense with colored squares, became a visual shorthand for the crisis, a month when seismicity never truly paused and every day brought the possibility of something stronger. In this context, the numbers are more than statistics. They represent a continuous test of the city's preparedness and the resilience of its buildings, roads, and emergency plans. With each quake, the pressure on policymakers grew. Can current protocols keep pace with this level of unrest, or does October 2025 demand a new approach to safety and risk management in the caldera's most exposed neighborhoods? Temperatures at Campi Flegre's main fumarole stations are climbing again, tracking the same upward trend seen in ground movement and seismicity. At Piscirelli, the FLX-8 sensor positioned 5 meters from the vent now records temperatures between 91 and 96 degrees Celsius. These readings fluctuate with weather. Rain and cold can briefly lower surface values, but the long-term curve is unmistakably rising. At Solfatara, the BG fumarole stands out. Its average temperature holds near 166 degrees Celsius, with recent peaks reaching 170 to 173 degrees Celsius. This level of sustained heating is unusual outside of major unrest phases and has drawn close scrutiny from monitoring teams. Gas emissions tell a similar story. High carbon dioxide flux persists at both sites, with recent field campaigns measuring peak spot values of 30 to 45 kilograms per square meter per day at Piscirelli, and 20 to 25 kilograms per square meter per day at Solfatara BG. Integrated over the entire field, emissions routinely exceed 5,000 tons per day at Piscirelli and 1,300 tons per day at Solfatara. INGV bulletins. Confirm these high outputs into late 2025, linking them directly to increased permeability in the fractured caprock. 
The data show that as the crust cracks and uplifts, more heat and gas reach the surface. Clear evidence that the system's internal plumbing is changing in real time. Protezione Civile maintains Campi Flegre at yellow alert, even as residents endure daily shaking and repeated building inspections. Official statements stress that yellow does not require evacuation, but local leaders say the reality on the ground is closer to orange, and some call it dark yellow. The situation is a public safety and communication challenge. In September 2025, a large-scale sea-based evacuation drill put these policies to the test. Residents from the Red Zone were directed to Pozzuoli and Bagnoli ports, where delays quickly mounted. Elderly and disabled people waited in ferry queues for hours, with medical triage teams struggling to keep pace. Roadworks and fresh ground cracks near the port entrance created bottlenecks, and poorly marked exits left some groups circling for directions. Communication between municipal officials and the Coast Guard broke down, causing confusion about embarkation priorities. After action reports flagged unacceptable wait times and gaps in radio coordination, and they questioned whether a real emergency, especially one involving a stronger quake or a marine hazard, would overwhelm the system. The result is a growing call to revisit not just the alert level, but the entire approach to evacuation and risk reduction. Proposals include phased resettlement of the red zone, retrofitting critical structures, and clarifying embarkation roles and priorities before a real disaster. Local leaders and emergency planners are urging immediate review and improvements to restore public confidence. Numbers alone will not keep Pozzuoli safe, but they do offer a clear set of priorities. The INGV dashboard now tracks uplift at the RITE station week by week, flagging any acceleration above 2.5 cm per month. Seismic bulletins highlight every magnitude 4 or stronger earthquake, with special attention to events at depths of 3 to 5 km, close enough to test old masonry and block critical exits. Temperatures at the Solfatara BG fumarole are logged each week. A sudden jump above 173 degrees Celsius, or a spike in carbon dioxide emissions, is cause for review. These are the signals to watch. Uplift rate, quake count and strength, maximum vent temperatures, and any sign of new ground cracks or buckling roads, especially near evacuation routes. For residents, preparedness is practical, not theoretical. Tall furniture should be anchored and heavy items kept off high shelves. A go bag with a flashlight, batteries, medicines, important documents, water, and a mask for sulfur smells should be ready. Any new cracks in walls or doors that stick should be photographed and dated, and the record kept for future reference. Every household should know two ways out, steering clear of streets lined by brittle columns or overhanging facades. In Pozzuoli, vigilance is measured not just by the numbers, but by the readiness of every home and family. Today, nearly a million people live above an awakening caldera. Centimeters of uplift and daily tremors are now redrawing the risk map in real time. As ground movement accelerates and caprock weakens, the urgency is not theoretical. It is a question of readiness. Nature sets the pace, but decisions made now shape who stays safe tomorrow. The window for preparation narrows, while the signals beneath Naples grow impossible to ignore.